warning, what you are about to hear will disrupt the norm. We are the voice of the social misfit. We empower the outliers. Nah, don't run from the discomfort. You need to stay in it. Feel the feels and feel some type of way. Let it hit your core because that's where our healing and our change begins. System malfunction. System override. I'm the trigger! We already in here. Let's get it. Yeah. Okay, well, since we in here, we might as well tell them what on earth we doing. Another you know, episode. Coming together. All right. You guys, thank you so much for listening to us babble <laughs> today. This is Phil and Triggered, and we're going to be talking about topics that just make us feel some type of way, going to make us feel stressed or anxious or angry or frustrated for the culture, of course, because I don't think there's many podcasts that kind of give us that space to be in our feels and let you know how we're feeling you know so hopefully we'll say something that's triggering you because the topics have definitely triggered us and we're just going to be here talking it out talking it through but i'm lauren jarell is here what up (laughs) sarah is here hey alexis is here hey y'all and latasha is here and we are the crew. We're Propel Production Center, y'all. But you're going to get into that a little bit later. First and foremost, I don't know. Should we say at least a fun fact or something? <laughs> Who we are, what our I'm about to say they don't, know, they, don't, they don't know us. They, they don't, don't know, know anything about don't know us. Y'all don't know us. <laughs> Who are we? Would everyone ahead, like ahead, to go around the room and say? <laughs> okay. So, you guys, I'm Lauren Jones. I am a clinical social worker by trade and an artist at heart. And I brought all of these uh, people together so we can develop programs and products and services that promote mental health through the expressive arts. My favorite color is burnt orange (laughs) and my favorite dessert are brownies. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Y'all better follow. <laughs> okay. Y'all better follow along. <laughs> said burnt orange. That is the color. Mm. It's either burnt orange it or copper. Thank you. Color. Thank you, Sarah. See, we're <laughs> DIYers and she already knows. All right. All right, friends. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? I go by Jarrell TG, also known as Jarrell the Grio. My students call me Mr. J. Um, yeah, uh, titles I I I I operate under is artist, MC, entrepreneur, educator, and my favorite color is royal, majestic purple, and black, of course. <laughs> I'm black and no. black, black. Blackity, black, black. What? What's th- Did you That's- say royal, majestic, <laughs> purple? It's, it's, a, it's a prime, it's a deep yeah, royal. It's a, it, that's what it's called. You can't that's have royal. two adjectives <laughs> for the gonna, color. How are you going to tell me I can't have okay. right. two adjectives? That's, that's where I'm at. It's, it's royal. It's, so is that two different colors is what you're saying? It's just two different descriptive adjectives okay, for I'm, one color. I'm going to stick to majestic purple. How about that? Okay. That's my favorite color is majestic purple. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus. Go ahead, right, I'll, go I'll go next. Hey we guys. Need more black male reason, representation, man. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hey guys, I am the program director for Propel. I am down in the Carolinas. So if anyone is in Charlotte, hey. <laughs> um, I let's see. I love home decor and fashion. Um, my favorite color is oh, I don't really like colors. I just kind of like the tones, like grays, whites, blacks, tans. I don't really like a color and my favorite food is man, I don't even have a favorite food man <laughs> I like all the food <laughs> <laughs> are we accepting that okay That's all it. the foods all the foods we okay are we recording? yes <laughs> yes <laughs> Latasha, go on ahead. 
Hi, I am Latasha. I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator for Propel Productions here in PG County. Uh, let me see. My favorite color is Flower Lilac, which is a very light purple. I love Periwinkle, too. <laughs> um, my favorite food is seafood and pasta. You can mix it together and add a whole bunch of sauce. And mm. I'm in heaven. I like things saucy, too. <laughs> Saucy. Yep. I don't I don't like how that sounded. That was, I'm feeling triggered by that. I don't know. That was a little Lauren out here getting saucy. Uh, I bet for food purposes. Hmm. I guess that leaves me. So hey y'all, my name's Alexis. I'm an intern at Propel Production Center, and I've also been a participant in many of Propel's programs. My favorite color is marigold yellow, and my favorite food is mac and cheese. Can I just say, I just love how extra we all were with these colors. There was not a regular (laughs) primary, secondary. I just read. Right. No blue. So as you guys can see that this group is uh, quite comical, so... If you're not into some laughs while you feeling triggered, then you might want to turn this off. I'm gonna just say it right now. I want to say I want I want I'm hoping that I say a couple of things that's gonna trigger somebody. That's already what I, my my goals for today. Mm, okay, look out now. I mean, if if that's what that's what we're here for, right? Yeah. Get out these bills, right? That's what we're here for. So. Y'all already gonna realize I'm, I'm gonna be the wild one. I'm gonna be the wild one of the bunch. I'm the wild card. So. Mm. So this is our inaugural. Moving on. So um, <laughs> this is our inaugural set <laughs> podcast, and you know, since it's January, we're going to be talking about setting our intentions, getting ready for 2021, figuring out what on earth we want to do. So in order to do that, I'm asking you guys if you had to pick just one word that you want to focus on for the entire year like what's that one thing you really want to work towards who jumping out first consistency you no (laughs) (laughs) no you can't be consistent who dare you that's my word (laughs) dang we should have practice before we did this i mean we could both take the same word exactly why why two people can't be focused it's on not the same my word thing? right i guess mm-hmm. okay go ahead sarah explain why you have selected consistency for 2021 <laughs> because um in a lot of the things that i'm involved in consistency is what's gonna make me successful if you're not consistent in the things that i'm doing right now i'm just gonna fail it's not gonna work i gotta put in work I got to keep doing it. I got to be consistent. Mm. Big facts. My I, job. Yeah, I answered that question with the word consistency. <laughs> you did. Okay. Well, I'm not going to go next because I'm going <laughs> to space out the words consistency. <laughs> Who else is <laughs> Who's going next? Man, so my word is unapologetic. In 2020, I started growing my hair out. You know what I mean? My artistry has become a lot more expressive. Just my everyday life has become, uh, because of uh, our our favorite director, uh, Lauren, I've been able to uh, kind of be more unapologetic about everything, feels and all that stuff. So my 2021 is going to be solely focused on not caring about what anybody else feel about what I'm doing, whether it be artistry, whether it be uh, my career paths, whatever. Everything is going to be like, this what it is, this what it ain't, you don't like it. And I already said that today to, to the audience, so they already see what time I'm on. Oh, okay. Big facts. Mm. <laughs> well, all right then. <laughs> Man, I'm, uh, we're looking for more uh, male representation for, for this podcast. I'm feeling triggered right now. Everybody's judging. It's all good though. I'm gonna hold it down for the black men in America and beyond. Mm. Hmm. Unapologetically. <laughs> I'm over y'all already. <laughs> already. So what else? I'll go. <laughs> um, my word for 2021 was being present, focusing on where I am now, 
not necessarily the past or I want to go be in the future, but basically focusing on how I can be the best me right in the present moment. I like that. Our future. Yeah, yeah. Ain't nobody, we ain't say Alexis was the young buck. Young buck of the, the group. The voice of the young people. She holds it down <laughs> for her entire generation. Try, try. <laughs> All right, Latasha. My word is ambitious. Mm. So for me, I'm going to be setting goals for 2021. And they're going to be specific goals, and I'm going to be meeting all of my goals. Like, ain't no cut cards. It is what it is. We got to go one through 10, and we just going to meet them. I don't think I ever heard Latasha say, ain't no cut cards. So you know 2021 <laughs> is about to be lit, okay? That's right. That's funny. And for me, I chose consistency as well, just like the program director, because great minds think alike. But just kind of reflecting over 2020 and realizing like where my needs were and where my lack was, it was probably because of lack of follow through or just not staying true to the course. I feel like I jumped around a lot, like, oh, I want to start this and I want to do this and then I want to do this and I want to do that. And I didn't follow back and saw that all the way through. So I definitely want to work on consistency and being committed to whatever my goals and aspirations are for 2021. I'm carrying the 2020 goals too. You know, they ain't going nowhere, but consistency is going to be really important. So I do want to encourage our listeners, if you guys don't have a word for 2021 yet, really think critically and creatively about like, what do you want to say? What what type of needs do you have? What type of goals do you have? How do you want to speak over your life? Do you have a mantra or an affirmation? Just, I think words are really powerful. And sometimes we get, we're really easy to do the negative self-talk. So I want you guys to start January off with some positive self-talk and moving in the right direction and just begin with the end in mind. That's it. That's all that's it. That's That's it. That's it. Hop into 2021 in a run. We gotta, we gotta make that make that trend. Start yeah. 2021 with a run. You know what I'm saying? Don't walk into 2021. We gotta be, man, that's good. <laughs> we didn't say anything. We didn't say anything. Okay, but I, I will say, please note that I asked the team what their word for the year is, not what their New Year's resolution are because I personally feel like New Year's Eve resolutions are trash. Like, just dumb. Is there a reason? Yeah, I mean, I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they're really fluffy, feel good <laughs> statements, but they don't have much weight. They don't have much of a game plan. And I just feel like we fall off of them around March. Oh, you gave people that long? That's a whole three months? <laughs> right. I mean, some people don't make it three weeks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can you make it out of January? Yes. Mm. You, didn't get you know them. what? There are some New Year's Eve resolutions. I did not make it out of January. Yeah. So maybe March was a little too. That's ambitious, as, as Latasha said. <laughs> but Alexis, you were like, what what do you feel like New Year's Eve resolutions are not trash? I don't think they're trash. I think it takes a certain type of person to have New Year's resolutions and actually get through them. Like you have to be consistent with it. Mm. Consistency. Oh, <laughs> dropping <laughs> bars. Because I mean, like, okay, say um. Let's give me a random New Year's resolution, like something random. I want to lose fifty pounds. I want to lose weight. Okay. <laughs> if you say, okay, so if you say I want to lose weight, and then you don't do anything to try to lose weight, then you're not really being consistent with it, and you're you can't expect results if you're not going to put in the work for it. So I don't think they're trash. Maybe people could um break their new year's resolutions down so they're more like monthly type goals or quarterly or however but i don't think the idea of it as a whole is trash well, what's- oh i i agree with lauren 
And I agree with Alexis. I agree with Lauren because I do think they're trash. I don't think you should call them New Year's <laughs> resolutions. If you want to make a goal, let's make it at the end of December because it's a goal that you have and let's have a plan for it. I do. Be I also agree with Alexis because if you don't have a plan for it, your New Year's resolution is going to fail. Like people go in, oh, I want to lose 50 pounds. That's my New Year's resolution. They make a little bore. You can get little cute markers and stuff like that hanging up on the wall, but there's no specific plan so how you gonna lose 50 pounds uh i don't know maybe go to the gym maybe <laughs> eat a salad every now and then no that is not a concrete plan exactly so if you want to if you want to have a resolution if you want to do something let's make a goal let's have a plan for it let's not just go out there willy-nilly oh it's cute to make a new year's resolution so we're going to do that because you're not going to follow it because you don't have a plan for it but this but this even even past that wh what is it about December 31st to January 1 that feels like makes everybody feel like they supposed to start whatever goals or whatever process that they want to do at that time. If I if I say I'm trying to lose 50 pounds and it's October, why well, I'm be like, yep, 2021, yep, I'm gonna I'm I'm get there. When 2021, like bro, like that's a whole three months, two, three right. months that you have that people are wasting. And to, I've, I've heard people start talking about their New Year's resolutions before Thanksgiving. Like, Thanksgiving, even sometimes, before, still, this is the summertime, man. We're till 2021, man. It's going to be, if that's what your goals are, then the time, that's that's a structure that's, that don't really matter. Like, start your goal whenever it is that you've got it. Like, start that day. If you want to, that's now, a good point. You got a good, you got a good two weeks. You know what I'm saying? Especially that initial two weeks, we know when you first get back in the gym, start eating good, you're going to do that initial drop, and then it's going to start slowly dropping. If you start now, you can lose a good 15 by the January 1. I mean, I'm just saying, man. I think, I think it's about what question. Of a matter, you know, because it's like, okay, so it's December. It's like the end of the year. We're about to start fresh on a whole new year. So if I can right. get my mind straight that this brand new year, I'm going to start things right. You know, it's. I think it's a mind over matter of, the year's ending, we're going into something new, so I should try and do something new. So I'm going to try and right. lose 50 pounds. Everything I mean, that you didn't do last year, try to do next year, basically. Exactly. You got to reflect on what you did and didn't do in the previous year. Take it with you. Either keep it with you or let it go in the next year. But you know what? That that question that Jarrell brought up was a good concept because we do that with weekly stuff. Like, if we wanted to do a deep... See, Sarah, we can exactly. hear. Right. It's like, we maybe it's Wednesday. And we're like, oh, no. Um, when Monday comes around, I'm going to start my juice cleanse. Right. And I'm going to start my decluttering the house. But not on Wednesday, not on Thursday, not on Friday. No, I have to wait all the way till Monday. But that I think that is the same kind of concept we mentality we have with the whole... December 31st or October 1st like nah let's just wait till January I just think we like clean fresh <laughs> but nothing don't dark, stop when late. think about it I, I don't know I've I've been in different environments when the clock strikes 12 like right I've been at watch <laughs> night praise God I've been mm. in parties <laughs> praise God you mm. know what I'm saying so nothing changes Everybody goes, Happy New Year! And then it's it's the exact same. You live in the exact same life. So I feel like, like you said, it, it's a mind over matter thing, but where I feel like you need to make that personal battle to not have other things outside entities dictating when you need to take the next steps of your life. That's how I feel. And I feel it, like it could you could wake up every day trying to, you know what I'm saying, reflect on what happened and what you want to change in your life. Not be like, yeah, I, I got a good two months to still <laughs> piss off everything else that I do and wait till January 1 and they'd be like, all right, now I'm going to be a totally different individual. I'm going to be a totally, have a totally different mindset about how I'm approaching things. Yeah, yeah it could have also, that same thing yesterday. It could also be about like, how much do you really want it? Because I think about yeah. the weekly part of it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to start my diet on Monday because I know I want to get pizza and some ice cream on Saturday night. I really don't want it. But I mean, I've been doing diets my whole life and I know when I'm motivated, I'll start the next day. I'm like, no, forget it. I want to start now. I want this weight gone now. So 
So it, it, it just depends on how much you want it. People that are saying, hey, I'm going to start in January, they might not be that motivated. They might kind of be dragging their feet like, man, I really want to start, but do I really want to start? Man. Not really. You know what I mean? No, that's... yeah. I think you hit it right there. The motivation definitely has to be there. And what Alexa said earlier about there has to be a plan. I think we put a lot of weight in January 1, like the fresh start, whether it be Monday or 12 a.m. or January 1. But there's really no weight in New Year's Eve resolutions or Mondays. It really has to be on us being motivated to create those smart goals. But motivation is hard. And there's a... And there's times when we are motivated and then there's times when we're not motivated and what's going to propel us through, <laughs> propel, what's going to propel <laughs> us through when motivation starts to subside? Because I think that that's something that everyone can relate to and struggle with. What keeps us going when there's no more January 1 or there's no more Monday? I think sometimes it has to do like with self-control too. <clears throat> You know, like you might like, you might really love Popeye's chicken and you'd be like, I'm going to get a chicken today and I'll start my diet tomorrow. The fact that all of our examples. <laughs> That's what I'm has... saying. Y'all have slipped in. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Latasha. Go ahead, go ahead. I just thought it was funny. Sometimes, like if you literally like don't take your bank card out the house, you only carry a certain amount of cash for whatever you're going grocery shopping or to get gas, your motivation might be higher because you don't have the money in your hand to get that chicken mm. it won't be tomorrow <laughs> be, I'm, I'm good today you, you can do it I'm sure oh my God. <laughs> I like what you said though about the plan the smart plan that you would make to say you know what I'm not taking my bank card out the house I'm only walking around with cash because that almost doesn't have anything to do with motivation or self-control it's just it's just limited access to what means like you created a very smart fail safe plan that you knew yourself like you spent time with yourself you did the research you (laughs) you reviewed the game play and you were like you know what i'm gonna have to do something a little bit different we're gonna have to to approach this in a different fashion for sure that's funny (laughs) but not as funny as all of us coming up with weight clearly that's the thing eating healthier my thoughts i was going in a different direction but we had what three out of five people go straight to I want to lose weight. <laughs> That's my resolution. So I had I, I follow suit. I was going to talk about like from a mental standpoint, being more cognizant of your self care or some some of that nature. I was trying to trying to go down that lane, but y'all took it left. Y'all took it. Y'all took it real left. It's, it stayed there. <laughs> it stayed there. It stayed there. Was that okay. trick- was that triggering, Lauren? That looked like your face was a little. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like weight loss and weight management has been a rolling revolution. That just <laughs> a rolling revolution and an every Monday revo- um, revolution. So, so I have a question, and 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 I have a question, and being that this is probably a lot of people's because of the fact that three out of five people said that. That's probably a, a microcosm of a bigger of a bigger uh, a bigger percentage of people that say that that's one of their new New Year's resolutions. So I'll say for you all, do you approach that from a I want to be healthier fashion, or is it just like oh aesthetically I'm trying to I'm trying to look better in my clothes or whatever? Like what's the what is the what's the motivation? Aesthetically. <laughs> <laughs> that's the motivation like what yes that's it my varies. motivation and, well apparently it's not motivating enough like that's because everybody <laughs> say that and then don't, don't so and that's why clearly you're okay resolutions you are like. trash and then and then it gets to the summertime and they're like the beach better get whatever body <laughs> whatever body <laughs> <we got." laughs> <laughs> Man, listen. And y'all, and, and y'all had off this year because of COVID, so it's like you, people wasn't going nowhere anyway. I was about to say them quarantine that quarantine nineteen, where you gain nineteen pounds because you eat all them quarantine snacks. Oh boy, was the truth. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely, I definitely went into quarantine a little bit lighter than I'm coming out of it for sure. I mean, that's okay. I feel like self awareness is the first step. <laughs> Facts, facts. 
But speaking of COVID, speaking of quarantine, what are some, if you guys want to say, what are some New Year's resolutions? Y'all can't say wait, though, because we already talked about wait was a fail. But what are some New Year's resolutions that you guys had 2019 going into 2020 that you guys wanted to do? And now it's January 2021. And you're like, "Mm, you know what? That did not happen. I might roll it into this year. Mm. Well, uh, I had two two major things. Well, three major things actually that is is getting pushed into 2021. Uh, first one being I wanted to revamp my workspace that I that I uh, that I operate out of, like creative space or whatever. And um, yeah, that was that been a good two two years of resolutions. And it's just now happening. So hopefully by the top of the year, that'll be that I could chuck that off the list. Uh, like I said, I'm an artist, so dropping the album, I was supposed to be doing that uh, about three three resolutions ago. That still hasn't happened. So we'll see. You know what I mean? And then the last is the po- a podcast and being a, a regular or a host on a podcast has been one of my resolutions for the past two years since I really got into podcast. Look at that. Oh, that's, that's two off the list this year, man. Oh, man. So, so we still see what that album talk about. Y'all check me out in 2021. I might have something for y'all. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I was supposed to uh, buy a house, but COVID. Mm. Well, COVID put me in a position to cut back on some stuff so I wasn't able to buy a house so we finna push it into 2021 and you know if it doesn't happen 2021 2022 you know hey, whenever yeah. I, whenever I buy my house that's when we gonna buy the house but it's gonna be forever a new year's resolution until I get it roll over it's like rollover minutes like if it yeah. don't, mm-hmm. you don't use it then you just it goes into the next year that's how yeah roll, right. rolling it in there they don't yeah. roll over minutes. love it yeah facts I definitely wanted more money in the bank. I had a finance, I had a savings plan and COVID kind of ate up my savings plan. So I'm kind of almost starting over, which is disappointing because 2020 was supposed to be stacks. Hashtag get money. I know. (laughs) Hashtag bag lady. (laughs) Right. Also, I wanted to take a trip like maybe someplace I've never been, like Aruba or something. Oh, hey, Sarah, did she just say that she's sponsoring a Propel retreat to Aruba? Is that what she said oh, for 2021? Oh, is that? Hold on. Ooh, I think my mic is breaking up. Y'all didn't hear me right. Get our daycare together. Come on. We going to Aruba. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. ready properly. Hello, hello. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. You know what I mean? Uh, Alexis, Alexis can watch all the kids. Man, yeah, Alexis would <laughs> come. I don't know about that one. They old enough to do nothing yet. She can't. She ain't no point of being there. She'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, no, yeah, Alexis would probably be in college. Actually, Alexis, we would pay you to watch the kids. No crickets. I'm watching all them kids. I ain't watching all them kids. Crickets. I don't even blame Alexis. <laughs> Exactly. So I'm, I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be in a Ruba. What y'all talk about? Right. So definitely wanted to travel more. Um, that's rolling over. Yeah, those are my two mains. Dang, that traveling. That might have to keep rolling. I don't know. What oh, don't to travel. <laughs> <laughs> that's disappointing. Man. Latasha, Alexis, did y'all have a New Year's resolution that went to the trash can? No, that got rolled over. We decided they roll over. That they rolled roll over? over. Roll over into the trash can. <laughs> I know for Honestly. me, I said that when I was going to be done with school in August, that I was going to be passing my license test, like the month after. <laughs> I haven't even scheduled that test yet, so it'll be on it to next year. Roll it over. Yeah. It's I said fun. I wanted to be living in a different place. Yeah, it's going to roll over too. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's why I'm that's that's the point. December 31, don't stop no show. If you, it's just it's it's oh, just man. you know, time is just a construct, man. We we gotta gotta think outside the 
the proverbial box of time sometimes. Cause if we if we didn't do that, for one, propel, how 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 long has propel been established in itself, Lauren? 2016. We've been in the game since 2016. Yeah, you know I'm saying we and we still building, you know what I mean? So if we'd have been like, hey, we need propel to be here by the end of 2016 and it didn't happen, where would we be at right now? That's how I feel. Mm-hmm. So that's a lesson to all the all the listeners out there. Y'all just keep your keep your goals in front of you. That's all I have to say. Keep your goals in front of you. Regardless of whether you're hitting a new year or a new month, a new week, a new morning, you can wake up tomorrow and have something different that you want to mm-hmm. be pursuing. And yeah, so yeah. Did you skip? Did you go? Oh, um. <laughs> For, okay, I'm going to untransition the, <laughs> the transition just because Alexis didn't get to share her 2020 I mean, year's resolution. That did it happen. In all honesty, I like usually I sit down and write out New Year's resolutions. I did not do that going into 2020 at all. Uh, because yeah. they're trash? No. I mean, honestly, at the time, I just wasn't really in town. And it kind of just left me. I was focused on where I was. So, oh, you're being focusing present. on being present. You're being exactly. present. Exactly. <laughs> nice. I was being present. Uh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. 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 Well, we encourage you guys to not just make New Year's resolutions, but to also at- attach some smart goals to that to make some concrete plans, but also to allow yourself some grace. So if you are checking things off, that's amazing. But if you're not checking things off at the timeline that you originally intended, that's okay. But being mindful and being adaptive and being flexible and making those tweaks and changes just to make sure that there is movement regardless of the speed. Boom. And that's how you summarize a, a, a podcast a segment. A segment. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put a period Boom. in that. Period. Absolutely. So in addition to the feeling triggered topics that we want to <laughs> present, we also, since we represent Propel, which is about mental health and emotional wellness, we want to incorporate some wellness discussions. And then on the flip side, since we are also creatives and artists, we also want to incorporate some artistic discussion as well. So you're going to get a well-rounded show, well-rounded podcast. Give it, give it, give them the hands, Lauren. You got to give them the hands on that part. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so I don't always do that. Well-rounded show. I don't <laughs> always do that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Y'all going to get a whole bunch of this. Natasha's gonna say tidbit at least one time an episode. We, that's in her writer. That's in her contract. It's real so call everybody friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's the teacher. So I I, I taught first grade. So yeah, you know I'm saying. And then now uh, I'm in a space where you know we have uh, uh, members of the LBGT community. So I really be trying to enforce saying friends to not you know offend anybody. That's that's a growth process that I'm going through right now. Cause I'm a little bit old school. I'll be like, what's up folk? What's up? What's up guys or whatever. And, you know, trying to, trying to be more cognizant of not being, uh, not triggering anybody. But when I come here, y'all getting all that. So we <laughs> not worry about that. Oh, I see. So you're yeah. more inclusive, you know, it's creating safe spaces for everybody. Everybody else. For here. But not yeah. y'all, not y'all though. Here. Nah, we, we ain't okay. We ain't safe out here. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Mm-mm. Okay. No, no safe spaces. Okay. We're gonna get this work. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't even know how to transition. <laughs> I'm just gonna start, start back up talking about mental health and emotional wellness. Oh, I could have did the whole oh. mental health like hey, the trigger and thing. Hey, Lauren, Mr. Bef- Tra- I, I, I'm about to, I was, but before you transition into the next segment, I was saying this would be a great time to plug. The remix very smash room for our audience. What an excellent idea, Jerome. I'm, I'm here. Oh my gosh. Okay. So there may be moments in your life, listeners, where you're feeling stressed, you're feeling irritated, you're feeling, sh- um, I'm going to say stressed twice. You could be twice as stressed or frustrated or angry or sad or, you know what, bored. 
So we want you to one, acknowledge all those feels, but then bring them on over to the Remix Raid Smash Room located in Simple Hills, Maryland. Come on, you, you just come and you get to wear protective equipment, turn up the music, grab your weapons and your equipment and you go in and you just destroy all of our stuff. We have microwaves, we have ovens, we have dishwashers, we have glassware, we have ceramics, we have sinks. We just have lots of things available for you to go and really release the tension that is stored, not just mentally and emotionally, but also physically too. And we always want to bring fresh, innovative ideas to the mental health space. You know, you might not always want to talk and that's fine. So we just want to offer you another option for you guys. So if you're in Prince George's County, if you're in the DMV, come to Remix Rage Smash Room located in Temple Hills. We are um, adhering to COVID regulations and guidelines. You have to book in advance. So follow us at Remix Rage underscore Smash Room. Smash Room. And Smash click room. the book. A, And click the book link and, and we'll see you there. Boom. Plugs in commercial. Boom. Okay. Welcome back to our. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming there's going to be a commercial there. So, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us at Fill and Trigger Podcast. And we're about to get in to all things wellness, our wellness will. What's a wellness will, you might ask? Well, Firstly, we want to talk about that wellness is not just physical. So when we say wellness, we don't want you to just think about physical health and nutrition and exercise. In order to be holistically well, you have to be well in eight different categories. And physical wellness is just one of them. We use the wellness wheel to kind of visually explain all the different areas. And we're working on creating a wellness wheel for the podcast. Alexis has that project. You know, she might show you a little sneak peek of what it looks like. Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. <laughs> but anyway, there's eight different areas of wellness. So there's physical wellness. There is emotional wellness. There's social wellness. There is spiritual wellness. There is financial wellness. There's occupational wellness. There's intellectual wellness. And did I already say financial wellness? I don't remember. Yeah. Again, oh, there's that money. environmental wellness. I didn't <laughs> say that one. Boom. So there's eight. So every time we're here on the podcast, we're going to be talking about a different area of wellness. But right now we're just going to be talking about why it's important to be well in the first place. And I want to hear from you guys. How do you even define wellness? Maybe pre propel right now. So it was dope because... Um, so I'm a program coordinator for a, a arts job training program. And so yesterday talking to, uh, they were, they're basically like high school kids for the evening programming. But I actually had for our check-in time, I asked them that question. I, I pulled up a picture of the wellness wheel and I asked them what aspect of this wellness wheel do you feel like you should be most, of course, focusing on all of them, but which one is going to get a little bit of extra attention in 2021? And I got some really, really dope answers from these kids. Like being that this was their first time ever even hearing about, cause I know this 2020 was the first time I heard about a wellness wheel at all. So um, explaining it to them as like people, you know, focus on only physical or only emotional or only mental in terms of your holistic wellness. But I'm like, there's so many other areas that, that impact that. So I asked them, I was like, what, what is it, a, what in 2021, a, a resolution <laughs> do you want to focus on and and they was giving some really phenomenal answers for them that only been exposed to that the first time like a, as high school kids got them talking about you know i want to be more financially well in terms of how i spend the money that i do get so that when i you know graduate to higher income i'll be able to manage my money better people talked about spiritual development um it was it was really dope especially like i said to hear that from 17, 18 year olds. I was like, I know I was nowhere near thinking about that when I was when I was that age. So it was it was a dope experience for sure. I think that it's good that you're introducing them because 
unfortunately, we don't really learn about wellness in school. And school is where we normally go to literally learn everything. Well, not, you know, not everything, but a lot of things. That's how information is streamlined to us. So for us to not be talking about mental health or emotional wellness, it's a problem. And I don't know what it's going to take for it to be rectified, but I will say that COVID-19 definitely started us having some conversations out in the open about mental health and why it's so important. It's going to take Propel going global for that to happen. That's what it's going to take. That's what it's going to take. Okay, well, I guess we had to get on that. Hey, listen, that's our New Year's resolution, (laughs) y'all. Take Propel global. We could roll that into 2022, though, because we still trying to develop in the, in the DMV. We'll okay, there. yeah, that's fine. 2022 works for me. You know what I'm saying? We'll get My there. calendar is pretty free. We're going to at least take it to Aruba next year. That's what's going to happen. That's <laughs> at least. I'll take that. Bare minimum. Bare minimum. <laughs> <laughs> so, bare minimum. So, um... Moving on, because my mic, I just don't know if <laughs> everybody can hear me clearly. <clears throat> I don't want to get anything that I say misconstrued. <laughs> what current mental health, you know, and not even mental health, what current wellness practices do you guys have in place right now on the daily? Can I have an example? <laughs> Like, can you answer the like? Can you answer the question first, just so I can know where we're going with this? Fine. So, what mental health? Oh no, not mental health. What wellness practices do I have on the daily? Okay, so I know that for physical wellness, I'm working on setting alarm clocks for me to go to sleep because I'm a night owl and I do a lot of my work throughout the night. And there will be times where I wouldn't walk away from my computer until it'll be like 3 a.m. But that's not necessarily healthy because sleep is super duper important. So I've begun to set my clock on my phone to go off at 11. And that lets me know, okay, Lauren, get up from this computer. You're not doing any more work. So that's a wellness practice that I incorporate every day. So starting to set some structure and some systems in place to make sure my physical wellness needs are um optimal now i didn't say i go to sleep at 11 because we still working on me and we're doing baby steps but i'm at least getting up and walking away from my laptop at 11 at night no matter if i'm done or if i'm not done so that was just an example okay so maybe for so i don't want to say physical because you said physical so maybe for financial really I am really like pondering what I'm buying and do I need it and is it necessary and how is it going to really benefit my life? Um, Just trying to cut back on things that are unnecessary, unnecessary Amazon purchases. Can I buy something cheaper or do I need the name brand? You know, stuff like that. So um, I'm definitely a lot more financially aware of how I'm spending my money and what my money's going towards. Love it. Cutting back on Amazon is hard. Girl, let me tell you. <laughs> um, I'll say, I'll say uh, intellectual wellness. I'm doing a lot more um, formal and informal uh, studying of various aspects of digital media um, from uh social media marketing, stuff like that. Just getting a, a, a better grasp on the area of industry that I'm trying to, I'm trying to work in um, for the long term. So yeah, like listening, listening to the pod specific uh, topic, specific podcast, uh, reading articles. I've uh, attended a couple of seminars and um, e-newsletters and stuff like that. So yeah, my answer, trying to get my intellectual wellness on in in the space of uh, digital media and all that good jazz. Of course, as the digital media director for mm-hmm. Prepare I was Productions, hoping. I wanted to make sure, because I realized I didn't say what I did for Prepare when we was doing the introduction. 
It's a little broad, and broad. But yeah, so as the director of digital media for Propel, I am uh, investing into my intellectual wellness so that in 2021, uh, we can use digital media to take Propel global. Period. <laughs> <laughs> This cup's almost empty, guys. I hear that ice. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Round so, two. Alexis, Latasha, y'all got anything that y'all working on weekly? Um, for me, I'm focusing more on spiritual wellness right now, surrounding myself with people who um, are followers of Christ like me, because I know me and some of my high school friends, we have this group chat. We do like weekly challenges. Just encouraging because we're all like-minded believers so we all kind of come together to help um enhance our relationship with god so that's where i'm at right now i love that that's that dope. that's super dope that's super dope you know for me it's just emotional just uh dealing with where i am in the space that i am at the moment and just processing and going through it and just trying to build relationships as I go through my emotional part. Love it. I love that all of us have a different wellness practice for um, what we're doing weekly that we could speak on. And I love that we're all sharing it with one another so we can hold one another accountable and just keep one another supported and uplifted. So thanks you guys for sharing that. For sure. And I think one way that we can practice wellness in a lot of different ways is through the arts. So Propel does mental health through the arts, specifically expressive arts, because we're big on, you know, self-expression, self-discovery, self-care. And I mean, what better way than to use the arts as a voice and as an, as a release um, and as a means to process. So we do have a segment called the art of expression. And I was, <laughs> why, I said it out loud. That, so, why is that so funny? Uh, right. I said it out why loud. So now it's staying. But you do realize that that was the only <laughs> subject or segment title that you actually said. You didn't say any of the other ones. So I'm gonna just put y'all on notice of why why that was so funny. I'm gonna talk to the audience because oh wow, about, I didn't say the segment the names. Hey friends, hey friends, how y'all doing today? Listen, <laughs> so when we were when we were, in the, <laughs> when we were in the planning for this podcast, we were trying to come up with some segment headers, right? My the one that I came up with was the art of expression because <laughs> I just think that sounds dope. Like that's what I feel. All the other ones they were nice, but which one stuck in Lauren's head today? And it was the only one that she said. That was clowning um, me. Like I said, it's a lot of judgment here. <laughs> the only black man on the, and, I, and of course I support black women wholeheartedly. You know what I'm saying? I try my best to be an advocate for all things black women. I try, I try my best. I'm still learning though, but I'm trying my best. But it's so much judgment that comes this way at, from, from all of these wonderful black women to this only black man that's representing for everybody. But the art of expression though, that was the only segment title that was said. So I just want y'all to remember that. When we go on and y'all listen to next month's uh, podcast, let's see if she says the other ones because you already know which one this one is. I digress. I am playing world's Tiny. smallest <laughs> violin for all of these. Period. You see how I keep putting that in there? <laughs> you know what, audience, since we're talking, let me run through these segment titles real quick. And oh, so we got to go back and say one what of these was. things is not Let's like the other. Let's see if they can figure out which ones was where. Let's see. So we started off with Feel the Feels segment, and we moved into Trigger Warning segment, and then we progressed into the Wellness Wheel segment. And we're going to conclude with the Art of Expression segment and the art of expression segment is where we are going to be talking about all things art the expressive arts if you're an artist and you want to come on our podcast you hit us up because we're interested in talking about what is relevant to us what's relevant to you but I'm going to ask the team 
what is your favorite form of expressive art? How do you express yourself artistically and creatively? And I'll let either Latasha or Alexis start because you guys were normally the ones kind of wrapping up the segment, but I want you guys to start this segment. So what are your favorite forms of expressive arts? Am I starting? Sure. I'll start. Okay, so um, mine are between painting and writing. Painting, I just kind of got really into it over quarantine. And then writing is just something that I really enjoy because writing allows me to express things that I can't say verbally, so it's easier to just write them down. So those are my two top. Mm. Love it. Okay, for me, I would say aromatherapy. Um, I can piggyback off Alexis. I did just start painting during COVID, but I do paint by numbers. I really can't paint, you know, follow the numbers. I know for me, I do aromatherapy. Um, did myself a little manicure, pedicure yesterday. Did my little nails. Oh, and are they the lilac purple? You know, they're the mood one. I let my daughter do them, you know. So when I get cold, they turn pink. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I do that. So I have my little water bees and my little lavender essential oils. Little relaxation moment. Cool. Sprinkle the sauce. Sarah Drill, Lauren. Oh. So um, <laughs> mine would probably be, uh, mine is like outside of the box. People probably don't even think about it, but probably home decor. Um, and it is a expensive <laughs> expressive arts because I actually enjoy going into the store and buying new pieces for my house, switching out old pieces. So, I mean, it is pricey, but I do like decorating my house and I believe that my personality comes out in my decorations. Thanks. Um, well, as I say, I'm a I'm a uh, artist, hip hop specifically. Um, so anytime I get an opportunity to to find some uh, instrumental that's that's dope um, and that inspires some particular mood, some particular feeling, and then writing some writing writing filling the feels through my pen uh, on top of that, whatever that instrumental is, is always a great form of expression for me. So I have tons and tons of songs that are probably never grace the ears of the general public. They were just made literally so I can express myself. So that's my, that's my form. And mine, I like Sarah thoroughly enjoy interior design and staging. And my heart is probably with dance. I love dance, um, hip hop, liturgical, African, I want to learn tap dance. I got you. Oh, girl. <laughs> okay. Y'all heard it here. And um, I also like gardening. I just tried gardening. So just being out, trying to figure out how succulents work, you know, how to grow them and um, take care of them, especially up in Maryland. It's cold and the succulents are more desert. So it's been fun. But I do think that my personality probably conveys through movement. So I think dance is probably where my heart is because I get to leave. I might not be able to articulate how I'm feeling or what I'm thinking, but I can definitely show you through my movement, through dance, whether I'm choreographing, chore choreographing something or whether I'm doing somebody else's piece. So Lauren, as a, as a mental health professional, what, what do you feel like is the... I guess the selling point, I feel like it's starting to transition back, but I know for our generation, we were heavily, heavily influenced to uh, jump into like the STEM, the STEM areas of, of study. So what do you feel like is the, is the selling point of putting more prominent attention and energy back into the arts for like younger people, like kids, school age, Cause I feel like I know for me, for example, um, I didn't really get exposure to any type of arts on a mass scale in school. That's another, you know, along with the mental emotional health aspect, that was another thing that I know during my time in school, which is not that long ago, friends, uh, 
that, you know, that was something else that was missing. I look, see all the judgment. I know y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all see. We the are faces. listening intently. I know you see the faces, right? The judgment. It was not that long ago that I was in school. Exactly. Thank you very much. Um, but so yeah, what do you feel like is the is the sale? Like, what's the sale to to say we need to make sure that arts of not just you know basic instrumentalists or you know choir, but a a a full spectrum of art based things in schools what do you think is a selling point for that like how 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 do how will we approach that um I think above nothing else I would say that art is an outlet it's a release they've already robbed school-age kids of recess in some gym so I think art is a outlet for them but I also think that art definitely molds both sides of the brain the critical side but also the creative side and the two definitely have to connect and communicate in order for us to be global citizens and problem solve and be able to negotiate and manage and navigate not just the logical stuff which we were conditioned through STEM but also the empathy and the connection side and just being able to express and share vulnerability. And I think that we learn those skills through the arts. Mm -hmm. And I honestly think that that's been lacking with our generation and older generations. You don't really see that. But with our newer generation, well, not our newer, but Gen Z, you are able to see them being way more socially conscious and way more connected and way more vulnerable and transparent and being able to advocate for one another. And that's just a beautiful blend of both the left and right brain. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that's art at work. And I think that art is extremely powerful. And I also think that art is a tool of engagement. So, and we see this virtually, like when, when teachers go viral because they do like a hand, like a dap, for all the students or whether they rap like an, a history lesson or whether they allow dance breaks in between subjects like art definitely re-energizes mm -hmm. us and um I don't know I just think it's kind of like a collective voice and it really doesn't matter what style or what medium of art you do I definitely think just being able to say like I'm a creative or I'm an artist it just kind of links you to everyone else that's within that tribe so in summary, art is life. <laughs> and art is life. Boom. Big facts. Boom. Big facts. Period. Well, I'm all talked out, y'all, honestly. You feel that? But I, f I feel like we covered a lot of things. We went from New Year's resolutions to talking about a little bit of COVID and how it impacted us. We talked about the words of affirmation that we want to speak over our lives and declare over one another. And we did a little sprinkle of wellness and how diverse it can be. And then ended it with all that we love, which is the arts. So hopefully we didn't trigger you too much. I feel like this was a safe, safe first episode. Just to kind of get them, get them, get them, get them tuned in to what we what we talking about. I feel like as as time goes on, y'all get a little bit more triggered. But we wanna we wanna build your spirits up. So when you do get triggered, you'll know how to respond. You'll not know, know how to not manage those emotions, but feel those feels, right, Lauren? Mm hmm I mean, that's that's what it is. That's where the healing and the change begin. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, my, and you you guys, sorry, listeners. If you guys have something that's bothering you or triggering you, something that's making you feel some type of way, some type of topic or scenario that happened or that you heard about, and you want to hear our view and hear what we have to say about it, just email us, just send it to us, just let us know, just comment, and we'll definitely have a converse, have a very raw conversation about our opinions and our thoughts on that matter. What's so, the email? Hey, we'll hear from you. Let them know the email, Lauren. Oh, okay. So it's info. <laughs> at propelproductionscenter.org. Right right Propel has one L, production has an S at the end, center.org. Yeah, hit us up. We, we, we want to hear from you all. We want to uh, speak on the things that we feel, you all feel like is most relevant to the mental health conversation because what we want to do is 
what what is it? Changing the stigmas and stereotypes around mental health in general, and especially in the black community. You want to reignite the dream of wow. being in a place. <laughs> That was right. That was right. On wow. Yeah, it sure was. <laughs> well, it reignite the dream of being in a place that we can be all mentally and emotionally well. That's what that's what I, that's what we're here for. So the only way we can do that is by speaking on things that may be triggering so that we can get those feels out, talk about them and know how to approach them better in the future. So that's 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 the goals. That's Facts. The, that's the goals. So anything you want to say to wrap up, Lauren, what, what you, how you want you want to put a bow on this gym? Man, I thought that was the bow, but That's the bow? That's the I'm bow. about no. Nope, that was the bow not, tie. It's not the bow anymore. If it's the bow, tie it. <laughs> okay, all right. So that that was the bow, but I'm about to bow it up too. You about to get two bows, bow bow. I just want to say, I'm gonna head out. <laughs> okay, edit that part there. That's a move. That to the blooper reel. I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for taking a chance on this podcast, for listening all the way through to hearing who we are and what we have to say. I promise you that we're going to have juicier, more triggering conversations as the time goes on and you guys are going to get to know us better and hopefully we'll get to know you guys better. But we look forward to having difficult conversations, very uncomfortable conversations, conversations that you might not want to have with your friends or your family or or whoever. So we want to have them here together. We want to grow as a collective and as a unit and we want to be mentally healthy you know we want to be emotionally well so the way that we do that is by having difficult discussions and that is feeling triggered and we are propel and we out period <laughs>